What's up everyone, it's Prometheus, and today we're going to talk about the top five worst modern coffee trends. Now when I use the phrase worst modern coffee trends, absolutely something comes to mind for you. I, I have no doubt in my mind. Some things come to mind for me as well, and when I did the Instagram poll asking you guys to let me know what some of the worst coffee trends are in recent memory were, there was a few that really rose to the top and you're likely going to see some that you voted for in this video. And if you didn't have a chance to vote for or talk about some of these worst trends with me on Instagram, be sure to jump over to my Instagram, follow me at Prometheus, so you can be involved in those conversations and fun little things that I do on Instagram throughout the week. But anyway, let's jump in to these trends. Of course, I'm all about making great coffee easier to access for everyone. And that's kind of the whole reason I started Spromethius and built this channel and this brand. But there are some things that just kind of eke over the line just a little bit. And one of those things is the draft latte. And lots of things are great on tap, don't get me wrong, but do we really need a latte on tap? Do we really need milk running through tap lines? The thought of the bacteria farms that can be created by milk and sugar and things like that running through tap lines without being constantly flushed is just a nightmare. And it gives me food poisoning PTSD just to think about it. It just seems like a terrible idea all across the board. And now you can skip the tap altogether and pick up these draft lattes in cans at your local grocery store. You can even get them sent to you room temperature by our friend Jeff Bezos, which, you know, with reviews like this, how can you go wrong? And of course, I hate to rain on the whole parade, but isn't the fact that this draft latte is in a can make it the exact opposite of the definition of draft? Just saying. I guess to a certain extent, I could forgive some of these missteps if it actually was a good tasting product. But the fact is, it just doesn't taste good. Now, that's my personal opinion, but you can barely taste the coffee. Generally, if it's a flavored one, like this vanilla one I picked up for the video, all you really taste is vanilla and some kind of weird funk that I think has to do with the nitrogen and some of the thickeners and preservatives that are in there. They advertise this as all natural, but there's no way you can store milk at room temperature without some kind of preservatives. And finally, what I don't understand about these draft lattes is the added foam. Why would you put foam in what is essentially an iced latte? Technically, iced lattes don't have any foam, and even hot lattes have far less foam than what they actually show here, or what I can get just in the can at home. So it just doesn't make a whole lot of sense any which way. Okay, I get it. You're into keto, you do CrossFit, but just keep your butter coffee in your blender at home. I used to work in a cafe that actually served bulletproof coffee as a menu item, and it created just a workflow nightmare. Even with a pretty well-staffed cafe, it just really slowed everything down. Just imagine having a line of people out the door, making shots, making pour overs, and then someone orders a bulletproof coffee, which means you have to stop what you're doing, get out butter, MCT oil, coconut oil, whatever else goes in there, measure these things out, blend them all up in coffee. It was just a total nightmare. I'm not saying the science or the effects of bulletproof coffee aren't legitimate, but it always has been and totally should be an at-home experience only. If anything, it's because you're going to completely destroy that public restroom after ingesting what is essentially a super aggressive laxative on an empty stomach. So do your part, spare your fellow customers and the cafe staff from having to deal with your massive buttery bowel movement first thing in the morning. It's really just common decency. In theory, this seems like a great idea. We've all ordered an iced latte and maybe take a sip or two and then come back to it a minute later and you've got that layer of water that sits on top. That's not great. So using espresso for your ice, seems like just a perfect solution to that watery fate. Of course, these things look great on Instagram, but like many of these trends, the aesthetics kind of take priority and things like taste and practicality take a back seat. There's really no way of having a balanced drink using this method. If you drink it right away, you're basically only going to taste milk. If you let all the coffee ice cubes melt, it will likely still be heavily imbalanced in one direction or another. 
Catching it at that perfect point of milk to espresso balance comes and goes as quickly as an avocado goes from underripe to overripe. So in the end, this is just basically a photo op and nothing more. The goth latte or the charcoal latte is the unfortunate mixture of our modern obsession with detoxing combined with our compulsive need to be caffeinated, and it hit its peak popularity in about 2018. Like many of these trends, aesthetically it looked awesome. It was one of my favorite things to make when I worked on bar because the contrast of the black and the white just really popped in your drink and made your latte art just look amazing. There are of course legitimate reasons to ingest charcoal, it can help with some stomach problems, and it can be used to save someone's life in the event of an overdose, but the popularity of it dropped off pretty sharply when doctors kind of came out and said that, hey, you know, ingesting this charcoal does absorb small molecule medications, like things for anxiety, depression, and birth control, just to name a few. So people generally tried to pull themselves back from it a little bit, and that trend, you know, they're still served, but I don't see them nearly as often. To me, the goth latte tastes like you're adding chalk to your drink, which isn't all that appealing. Outside of the novelty of the look, I just don't get this one. In terms of coffee trends, 2020 has been the year of the Dalgona. Its rise was the perfect storm of TikTok cringe mixed with the sheer collective boredom around the world everybody was experiencing from the early stages of the COVID lockdown. So much so that it was inescapable. Proper specialty coffee cafes began promoting it on Instagram and nearly every food and beverage blogger was trying to cash in on its popularity. Even James Hoffman got swept up in the Dalgona hysteria. Why are we still here? Just to suffer? Essentially, Dalgona or whipped coffee is just instant coffee mixed together with water and sugar and whipped for quite a while to create this dense foam that is spooned or poured on top of cold milk. I admit this does actually look pretty good, but essentially it tastes like highly concentrated instant coffee, which is pretty bitter with kind of a hint of sweetness from the sugar. The Dalgona trend hung on for quite some time, at least a few months before it started to really fade, and now it's been kind of cast back into the cesspool that is TikTok where it belongs. In the end, I spent quite a bit of time sifting through this idea, really trying to narrow it down to the five that I thought really were the most deserving of the name the worst coffee trends. But of course, there were a ton of honorable mentions just from my experience and from what you guys told me on Instagram. So of course, I wanna hear from you down below. Let me know your thoughts on these five trends or if you have some honorable mentions that you think should be added to the list, I'd love to hear those as well. Any other comments, concerns, questions, ideas for videos, whatever they are, let them go down below in the comments. And of course, I'll see y'all next week. And of course, a big thank you to my August Patreon supporters, Ads, James B, David, Christopher, John K, Squeegee, Roe, Brian, Lisa, Thomas B, Andre, Rick Racer, Sean, Noel, Spookus, Bound Coffee, Mika, Samantha, Nathan, Claire, Steven, James K, Josh, Andrew, Horison, Bobby, Corey C, Curry, Ninja Warrior Coffee, Testing123, Dave B, Jerry, Marcus, RD, Matt, Tim, Tony, Zachary V, Tyler, and UK Espresso. And of course, a big thank you to the barista and barback tiers. If you want information on my Patreon, there's a link in the description and in the upper right hand corner right now and last but not least thank you for watching don't forget to like share and subscribe hit that little bell button for notifications of new videos posted every friday follow my instagram at prometheus for content throughout the week my blog at prometheus.com my coffee at littlegiant.coffee and as always stay caffeinated pony boy <laughs>